Hi everyone, I'm Eric Doggett and this is Photog TV, hosted by myself and Dustin Meyer. Episode 6 for Thursday, November 3rd, 2011. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Dustin is going to give us a little lighting demonstration outside, showing us how we can mix ambient light and flashlight to give a great look to our portrait images. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for joining us for another episode of Photog TV. And uh, this week we're going to try something different and, and we're going to push the edge just a little bit. Uh, Dustin had a great idea to do a live demo of outdoor shooting uh, for this week's episode. So we were trying to figure out how we could pull this off and it turns out that uh, he has some great Wi-Fi range right where he is outside of his house there. And so he has uh, graciously brought in... Um, a model or two and they're going to do some uh, shooting for us and he's all set up there outside so we're going to skip the the news portion of uh, Photog TV this week and go right into the shooting and I'm going to toss it over to Dustin who's going to tell us a little bit about what he's doing today. Hey everybody, Dustin Meyer here and yes we are here in Austin, Texas um, with a sudden change of weather. It has gone from a sunny 75 degrees down to a chilly breezy 55 degrees so um, but today what we'd like to do is just try a couple of different uh, demonstrations of outdoor lighting situations. Primarily what I do a lot of when I do portraits is a lot of outdoor work, mostly because of all the natural beauty that we have here in Austin. And so it's just something that I think we can try a couple of different lighting scenarios so that you guys can see some of the ways that I light my subjects because I find that a lot of what people are posting nowadays, they use a lot of natural light. However, they're not creating any direction with that light. And the problem with that is that, especially with your portraits, you don't have any dimension to it, and your images come out looking kind of flat. So we're going to try a couple of different tricks today. Um, I apologize if there's any wind noise from my microphone, but uh, I'm going to show you guys some ways that you can add a little bit more dimension to your portraits, making them more pleasing to the eye, and kind of take your photography to the next level. So first off, if I could have Emily please come over. Emily is our gracious model today. She was a bride, and originally she was going to uh, say hi, Emily. <laughs> uh, she was going to wear her bridal gown, but with the weather change and everything, I said, no, 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 please wear some warm, fashionable fall clothing. So we're going to offer that instead. So uh, Emily, if I could have you just kind of hang on the screen over here, and I'm actually going to be shooting from this direction. So what I'd like for you to do is just kind of lean back against the tree for me. There we go. And if you want to, you can have uh, like maybe one hand on the waist, there you go, one hand down, just like that. And can uh, Eric, can you guys see the lighting setup and, and Emily and myself as well in camera? Yeah, so just to, just to be sure on that, you've got uh, a light off to, the, to her right side and, exactly. and kind of like a reflector dish there, or is that a softbox or beauty dish? What I've got here, and thank you for bringing it up, can you see it? Okay. This is a, um, this is a beauty dish, and I'm using a, a 320 uh, watt second photogenic. Currently I've got it set to uh, full power because I'm just going to start, I always start at full and then kind of work my way down. I've got uh, pocket wizard uh, transceivers, uh, one on the light and one on my camera. And um, I'm also going to ask uh, Ashley, my assistant, to uh, come over and grab a reflector. And I'm going to have her bounce some of the light from, there you go. And if you want, you can just put that on my camera bag. Thank you. So, Ashley is the uh, awesome assistant that we have today. So, Ashley's going to stand right about here. Thank you. And I'm going to have her angle the reflector just a little bit so that she's going to capture some of the light coming from the strobe and it's going to bounce back and create a nice fill. But the strobe itself is actually going to be mostly a rim light and a backlight so I can create that separation between the subject and the background. So, we're just going to do a couple of different shots here. And one, two, three. There we go. Good. We've got just a nice little breeze going right on cue. And Ashley, I'm going to actually ask you to come over here on this side. And yes, the wind is always a factor here. I apologize. Perfect. And one, two, and three. Excellent. So what I did was I went ahead and had Ashley come to the other side so she could add more fill to the opposite side of the strobe. And I'm going to show you guys, hopefully you'll be able to see. I'm going to hold it as still as I can. But uh, so what you see, there's a strong rim light off to her side, 
and then you'll see some fill coming in from the reflector. And what I've done is the camera, I went ahead and metered it for the tree, so that way when she's standing alongside it, it should balance properly for her. Now, I'm always chimping, aka checking my LCD whenever I'm shooting portraits, because I want to make sure I nail it better than just you know, spray and pray. So we're going to do a couple more of these. So maybe, um, are you okay there, Emily? Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you very much again for doing this. Um, so maybe just like put a hand up on the tree for me. There you go. And just hand on the waist. Yeah, there you go. And one, two, and three. Excellent. So what I've noticed is that the hair light is a little bright, so I'm going to dial it down by about half. So right now I'm at full power. I'm going to go to about half. And rather than messing with my aperture, I just go ahead and change what's on the back of my mono light. I don't know what you guys decide to do, but usually what I meter for is my ambient surroundings, and then I adjust my strobes accordingly. So we'll try that one more time. And Ashley, if I can have you come just a little bit closer. Thank you very much. And one, two, three. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. So now when I go into post-production, I'll have a really good amount of light on the face of my subject. I'll also have a decent amount of light as the rim light. And one of these days we might actually be able to do this to where it'll just stream directly to my desktop. But notice again, we've got a strong light off to the side. We've got a good amount of fill covering the front of her face. We also have some strong backlighting, but then again, when shooting outdoors, there's not a lot we can do with that sometimes. Otherwise, we'd have to have a super powerful strobe. Now, so, Justin, um, were you using the reflector to get fill, uh, ambient fill on her, or was it the, the flash that you were bouncing that you were reflecting back? It's a combination of both. In fact, um, some of it was uh, light coming through the trees, but a lot of it was actually coming from the beauty dish. One thing I do like about using a beauty dish is it creates a really wide angle of light dispersion, which gives you um, more flexibility as far as uh, controlling where that light can go by using reflectors. Um, a lot of times I try to minimize the amount of lights that I use so that I'm not busy wasting my time trying to adjust all the different settings on all the different lights that I have. I'd rather just have one light that I only have to mess with one setting on and then just move my reflectors around or readjust my uh, settings accordingly based off of that one light source. So, um, so yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move over into a more, uh, more difficult shooting situation, which is going to be shooting in direct sunlight rather than in the shade. Because I know a lot of times our first instinct is to just immediately go for the shade and, um, and just hide out in that area. But sometimes we don't always have that luxury. So um, if you guys give me a moment, y'all can talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to reposition the camera and reposition our location so that you guys can see um, what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to go ahead and close out my video camera here for a second. Okay, ladies, we're going to move over into the sunny part over there. It's I know. Like he's, it's like he's put the shroud up and we can't see what's going on behind the, behind the curtain. Magic. <laughs> um, just bring the gold one. Um, I think they're having a pretty big discussion about royalties right now. <laughs> So Ernesto, have you done uh, light work before? You were talking about that before we started the show. Have you done any strobe work outside? Yeah, I have done a little bit of strobe of uh, strobe work outside, but I don't know if it's if you consider uh, a quantum T5D as a stro as a strobe light. I mean, I know about the those big Einsteins and those. What you, what's the other one of the other big brands that's out there that's used mainly in studios? Oh, um, you have uh, well, Profoot. Like Profoto's big, um, mm -hmm. Ellen Chrome. Um, right. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch. There's a bunch out there. Okay. Um, but I would consider that flash you mentioned. A, if you're shooting with it outdoors, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I have a. Uh, I have tried using it a little bit outdoors. There, it, it works out pretty well. 
Eric, do you all like do you guys always use strobes outside or um it, it depends like on what the client wants because the look is it can be different. I mean you have this sort of uh difference between purely ambient and then and then this purely strobe look and then somewhere in between. And what Dustin's kind of showing us is more of the in between where he's bringing that light in, but he's balancing it with uh, the ambient light. So um, I tend to shoot, for clients, I'll tend to shoot uh, both, actually, and just to give them that option because it's really easy to find a nice shaded spot to do a to do an ambient light uh, shot. I prefer the more, more of the strobe look because that's just a little bit my style, um, but I, I like to shoot them both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually... I usually use, um, I don't know if my mic is on. Yeah, we, we hear you. Can, Go ahead. We hear you. Yeah, I usually use uh, natural light for kids when I'm shooting kids outside. I don't know. I just don't don't feel finding this strobe with kids as being so natural. But whenever I use it with adults, then I use the strobe outside. <laughs> No, it makes perfect sense because, well, it's, apart from the natural issue, it's an issue of getting them to do something over and over again and be still yes. for it is is, mm -hmm. is the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get them to stay in the same spot. Right. <laughs> it takes it's taken me years to train my six year old. Now he's the point where I'm like, look here and smile, and he knows the drill. A four-year-old, like, every time we take a shot, he says, no. So it's like, ksh, no, ksh, no, ksh, no. So where is, it, where is everybody located at? Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas, as well as a couple other people I see in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in Austin, too. I'm at Fort Hood. I'm in San Antonio. Fort Nice. I'm in Florida. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm the only out-of-stater here. <laughs> We're starting small with one out-of-state person. Okay. So what happened to the video, the tutorial? He was going to relocate. He was doing two um, setups, and I've got my phone here in case he tries to text me, which he has not yet. But uh, he still... Um, Let's see. He's still. Oh, there he is. He's still back in the chat, and looks like his video is hey kicking back, back on. Up. Hey. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Vanessa's a little enthusiastic. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> 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 okay. So um, what I've done, as you guys can see, this is a very strong contrast situation. It's very backlit. So, um, and I do apologize if there's any flare that hits the lens on the monitor. I'm using my MacBook Pro here, so. Um, but we'll try to uh, try to make this as visible as possible. So, um, in this next lighting situation, um, a lot of times you guys may not have the uh, the luxury to, to hide next to a tall building. You may be out in the open, and you may be dealing with direct sunlight. You know, right now it's noon or 12:20 ish here in Austin, and um, you know your client may need something done at that particular time, but. Either way, I just wanted to show you guys some of the different things that I do to kind of make it, you know, still have a good look to it, but at the same time, um, you're working with what you've got. So if I could have Emily, our model, please come back over here. I'm going to have her uh, positioned to where the sun is going to be directly behind her. Now, the key thing is, um, I know you can't see it from here, but you're going to look down at your shadow, and you're going to shoot from the direction that your shadow is pointing towards. So my shadow is pointing directly that way. I'm going to be shooting from that direction going back this way into the light because I want to minimize as much straight down type of light from touching the front of her face. What I'd rather do is bounce that light back using a reflector. You could use a stronger light source if you wanted to, like, um, like a strobe or something like that. I, however, don't in my inventory have a super-powered high strobe. I know Eric does. But um, a lot of times I tend to try and just manipulate what I've got and work with that. So in our... Um, so let me uh, ask Ashley to come over. And a lot of times what I see is when people are bouncing light, um, what we've got here is a daylight balanced uh, pop-up reflector. Can I just show that to them real quick? Everybody see that? Now this is not a full length. This is just about a three-quarter size reflector. However, I'm not going to try and bounce 
all the light directly back onto her. I'm mostly just going to try and do it from about the waist up. One of the things I do see happening a lot, though, um, is people will always bounce kind of from below and back up. And for some reasons, you know, sometimes that, that's okay. Um, however, what I really like to do is have my assistant, when it's not windy like it is today, like we said, it would be a miracle if we can pull this off, um, actually get my assistant to hold woo, the reflector up like this and then bounce it down. And the reason is, and I know it's difficult for you guys to see, but I will show you in the sample photos when we put this recording on, on YouTube and our website, um, the angle of light bouncing back on her, we don't want to have it fill like up underneath her neck and underneath her eyes. We want it to be the opposite of that. We want the, the reflected light to back, bounce back down. And I'll go ahead and show you the difference. So, um, Ashley, if I could have you graciously step over here and just hold it right about here at waist level, bouncing back up at her. I'm going to do a quick mirroring test and just maybe hands on the head. There you go. Perfect. Just like that. And two, three. Good. Now, as I mentioned before, it may be difficult for you guys to see, but this is already a, a pretty bright shot. Mm. Um, let me do this. Is that better? Can you guys see that? Yeah, block that top with your hand there, Dustin. That... There we go. So um, it, it's it's very backlit, but you're bouncing enough light back to where the face is discernible and um, the features are lit. But if you notice, we shot from a we bounced the light from a low angle, so it kind of creates an unnatural looking type of reflected light. So I'm going to shoot the next shot by hopefully waiting for the wind to die down and then graciously asking Ashley to hold the reflector above her head so that when the light bounces back, it's going to bounce back at our model at a downward angle rather than going from up. So if everybody can just bear with us, like I said, we are dealing with some crazy wind today, so we may have to give it a few seconds. So Ashley, let me ask you to come in a little bit closer just a little bit higher, and I'm going to turn a little bit more towards the topic, just like that, maybe just like in the back pocket or something like that. There we go. She's giving me a weird right. There we go. And raise it just a little bit higher. Here we go. Ready? One, two, and whoops. There we go. One, two, three. Excellent. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to do that. Perfect. Okay. So, Ashley, you can put that down for a second. Juan's asking which uh, <clears throat> which lens you're using. I'm guessing that's a 70 to 200. Yeah, this is a 70 to 200 image stabilized L series f2.8. Um, I use this one a lot, actually, for portraits if I, if the uh, the room that I have to work with allows for it. Um, reason being, it's tack sharp. It's also really good for group photos and headshots. Um, but in this particular situation, I may not want all this foliage as my background, so having this, particularly if I were to zoom in the 200 all the way and then back up and then use a wide aperture, it's going to have a really smooth bouquet, so everything in the background will be completely soft and undiscernible. So um, on this next one, I shot it a little bit darker because the background was coming out so bright, but... The light direction is a little bit different because the reflector was bounced from a higher angle instead of down from below. Also, um, one of the things that you guys may have noticed as I'm moving the monitor back and forth is we're dealing with a lot of dead grass in the area, so that also acts as a, um, as a reflector as well. So you may want to kind of take that into consideration when you're selecting your, um, your location for your shot. So just to kind of change it up a little bit and show you guys one more situation in a not very different location. We're going to still use reflected light, but we're going to do it in the shade. We're going to use reflected light only, and that way you guys can see that you don't even need to use an electronic flash source. You can use something like just what you have available to you. So I'm just going to just, just, just to be clear, what you just did was uh, mm -hmm. reflected light only, right? There was no strobe there. There was no strobe. This was okay. reflected light, and this was out in direct light. But we're going to do one last scenario where you guys um, 
probably this is more of what you do, where you do find some shade, but then you use uh, a reflector to kind of bounce whatever available light you have. So um, what I'm going to do is just quickly move us over into the shade. Let me back this up just a bit. Hope I'm not giving you guys the Blair Witch effect here. Okay, Emily, if you would please come over here. I just want you to kind of lean back against the tree here for me. Now, Ashley, I'm going to have you come over. You're going to stand right about here and see where the sun's like really bright right here. I want you to try to bounce it from here right down onto her. And I'll come and help adjust. Even though I'm there, you might not be able to see. Um, can you guys see our model okay? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So even as Ashley's adjusting the reflector here, you guys can see the difference in the light quality, um, you know, as even as the wind is blowing it around, correct? Can y'all kind of make that up? Yeah, I can kind of see it flashing on her face a little bit as, as it moves around. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do this quickly so Ashley doesn't lose all the blood in her, her arms. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do, Emily, is come around the tree just a little bit. Okay, perfect. You can just lean back. See how, guys? We took a bright light off the tip of her nose. So let's see, right here. And two, three. Good. Turn your head to your left just a little bit. Chin down. And good. One, two, and three. All right, so I'm still getting a little bit of harsh light on the side of her face. So I'm going to ask Ashley to kind of step back just a little bit so I can move. Just go to your right a little. Thank you. They're like, I don't speak photographer. <laughs> Right, right, right. A little bit that direction. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. So right there. And one, two, three. Good. And one more, two, and three. All right. So let me do this. So as you guys can see here, originally when I was... Um, when I was taking this shot, I had her turned a little too close towards the sun. Because of that, I was getting some really hard light on more of the side of her face as well as on the tip of her nose. And what I did here is I just turned her body just a little bit more to remove the, uh, the hard light that was hitting her on the front of her face and the side of her face. That little bit still on the right side, but it acts more of like a hair light. You can even have a second person hold maybe a jobo or a diffuser to help uh, screen that light. Justin, but can you... Majority Dustin, sorry, can you move that, that camera a little bit either closer to the lens or shield the top because we're getting some glare uh, and it's hard to see what her face looks like. Okay. How's that? Right there. there you go. All right. So, yeah, as you guys can see, there's still just a tad bit of hard light on the side of her face. However, the majority of her face is nice and evenly lit from the reflector light. And, you know, it's okay to have just a little bit of stray light coming in just to add a little bit of dimension. However, again, you want the majority of your subject's face to be, you know, controlled with the amount of light that you want to use. And in this, uh, in this instance, we're just using straight up uh, bounced light from a, from a reflector that was held at a higher angle than just something that was just held at the waist. Because, again, we're trying to get away from, you know, people bouncing from a, a low angle and under lighting and having the, the light come down from a higher angle so that it looks more of like a, like a natural light source. You guys are like, I have such a headache now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do we have any questions while I'm out here? Um, any, uh, I, I'm, looking here on the, I'm looking here on the chat, and Erica asked at one point if you ever use the strobe in direct light as well or just reflectors. So I'm guessing, Erica... You're asking um, if, if you ever, if you, oh, if you ever just use the strobe and not the reflector. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, we can definitely. Um, I mean, if you guys can hang on a second, I can go get the light and we can do a quick setup with that real quick. So just hold on, just a moment.
So the key to all this is when you shoot somebody, have have them bring someone else along to hold the reflector. <laughs> yeah, Jul Julie's asking about, uh, she's mentioning uh, for the people that are watching this about uh, issues with doing these shoots solo and not having someone to hold a reflector. And I've tried both. I've tried having someone there. I've tried building like a little stand to do it. They sell like these little things that can grab onto the edge of a reflector and hold it. But the problem is that those things, besides being awkward and can flop, flop over one way or another, they'll catch the wind too, just like, just like there. And, and just because it's on a stand doesn't mean it's not going to be lifted up. Um, plus you spend probably more time sitting there with a stand trying to fine tune it than just having someone there, you know, bouncing in the right spot. You guys can carry this conversation. You can you can talk this conversation. <laughs> okay. Everyone's like putting it all over in chat here. Like we need to be quiet. <laughs> I had a cute photo uh, around Christmas time last year. We were just doing some pictures between family members, and I had a flash going and a reflector, and I had my eight-year-old niece hold the reflector, and I got a picture of her where she just looked like, oh, seriously, <laughs> this is a great photo. <laughs> They're never as excited about it as we are. <laughs> Especially when the reflectors are in, you know, 40 inches or bigger. Yeah, bigger than yep. them. Yeah. yeah, it was one of those mm -hmm. bigger than her <laughs> reflectors. <laughs> oh, gosh. I always laugh when my six-year-old's like, I want to help. I'm like, okay, go pick up that sandbag and bring it over here. And he's like, oh, that looks small. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like dragging it on the ground. <laughs> Daddy, why? Well. All right, I'm coming back on. All right, he's back. Okay. We are back, and so um, as per Erica's request, we're going to attempt to do one with uh, where it's strongly backlit, but we're using a strobe instead of a reflector. So, um, Emily, let me have you just kind of hang out by the tree there. I always use trees just to help me pull focus and stuff. Um, I'm going to turn the computer so you guys can see the lights in and there's Ashley. Say hi Ashley. Hi. <laughs> and we just turn this back here. Okay, so um, again I'm using a 320 watt second on about oh about half power or so. Um, I may actually go up with it because of how strongly backlit our subject is. But um, so we're gonna give it a shot. I'm shooting at about oh one yeah, about 200, one two hundredth of a second at f2 weighted ISO 100. Um, the reason I'm shooting at the low ISO is so I don't get overpowered by the backlight. But of course, I'm always checking my settings as I'm shooting. So here we go. And one, two, three. All right. So here's a good example of what happens. I mean, you might be too low overpowered. You guys have probably seen this happened once or twice with on-camera flash or off-camera flash, but you guys can see that it's a little too bright, so you can either dial down or just back up your light source. Um, I'm, what I'm probably also going to do is dial down on, or go up, sorry, on my, uh, my shutter speed just a little bit more to kind of dial down the background. As always, it's a work in progress, right guys? How high is your, is your light source? My light source is, um, that's a great question, my light source is just barely above the top of the model's head. And that's a great question because the reason for that is whenever possible you want to get a good chin light underneath, or uh, sorry, chin shadow underneath your subject. So that way, again, you kind of get that good uh, facial recognition, the photography, you know, psychology thing. You know, you can definitely see the jawline, the eyes, the nose. Uh, you don't have any of that uh, undesirable underlighting. So... Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop up my shutter speed and stop down my aperture just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna pull back my light source, kind of move it off to the right just a little bit. There we go. And 
one, two, and three. All right. So as you guys can see, I can hopefully see from the glare on my screen. There we go. It's a lot less harsh than the first time around. It's still pretty bright, but that's because we're trying to balance out from the background. Again, I'm also using a beauty dish as my modifier, mostly because of the amount of wind that we're dealing with today. Uh, a reflector umbrella or even a small shoot-through umbrella just wouldn't be something that we'd be able to pull off in this kind of weather right now. Um, the other thing you guys can do is you can have a separate light, and if you have an assistant, you can use a, um, a diffuser as a giant scrim, creating a much bigger softbox. Um, I know we've done that uh, multiple times where we'll have just a bare bulb strobe off camera, and then I'll have an assistant hold a giant diffuser off the camera and use that kind of as a, a larger softbox just to add more softness to the light. That's cool. Good tips. All right, guys. Well, um, real quick, do we have any other questions while I'm on? Because we're going to sign off here pretty quick. I know it's a little cold, and our, our assistant and our model have been gracious enough to help us out today. So um, if anybody wants to give them a round of applause. Thank you, Emily. Yay, thank, thank you, you Ashley. You. <laughs> they all say thank you, I promise. <laughs> thank I you promise. <laughs> I do have a all question. Right. Do you... Yes. Do you usually just shoot straight from the beauty dish, or do you put any kind of modifier to shoot through? Um, that's a good question. A lot, a lot of times the beauty dish uh, that I have doesn't allow for extra modifiers on the same light stand. So if I use a modifier, it'll be um, perhaps a larger scrim or diffuser that can either be held by an assistant or can be held by another set of light stands and clamps. Um, and a lot of times, it just depends on what kind of uh, quality of light you want to go for. Um, you know, a lot of times people like Eric might want to go for a more dramatic type of light, so they'll shoot straight on at the subject. Other times, what you might want to do is flip that beauty dish around and bounce it off of a much larger reflector held, you know, about two to three feet behind it. And that way, you just convert it into a much larger uh, reflector umbrella or, you know, even a, a giant softbox. Cool, perfect. And where where you say you're located right now? You're by the 360 bridge. Uh, a little bit. We're off in the Bull Creek Preserve area. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Any other questions for anybody? All right. Well, we're going to wrap this episode up. I want to thank Dustin and uh, his models for helping us out. Uh, they're going to run inside and get some hot chocolate. I might get some hot chocolate actually. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> But uh, we will have this episode posted tomorrow at photog.tv. Uh, we'll have the YouTube video there. And uh, we'll also have uh, Dustin's sample pictures that he's taken. So you can check those out and see them in a little bit more detail. All right? Cool. Enough. That's it. Thanks a lot for coming. We appreciate it. Thank All you. right. Great show as usual. All right. Take All care, right. everybody. Bye. Bye.